Protectors of the Suna Suna Baba Protectors of the Suna In alhamdulillah, wa salat, wa salam Allah, wa rasulullah. Welcome to another session of our um, a class on the angels of Allah. And I know that uh, it's been a while. Uh, as you guys know, I just recently had surgery uh, last Friday. And alhamdulillah, I'm recuperating fine. The surgery was a success. However, the pain, as you all know, anyone who's had a uh, uh, total uh, knee replacement surgery, you know just how painful that is. And alhamdulillah, it's being managed. The pain is being managed, but it still hurts. And it's very uh, hard to deal with this type of intense pain. But alhamdulillah, Allah made it so that I can sit here just long enough to do another class. And I did receive a lot of emails from you with questions about the angels. I'm going to try to answer some of those questions today in the, 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 in the lecture. So without, without any ado, let me put the PowerPoint up on the screen so we can get started because I don't know how long I'll be able to sit in this position with my knee. Okay, so let me uh, put, put the PowerPoint up on the screen. Inshallah, everyone will be able to see it. Uh, so this is session nine, by the way, we are in session nine of our series on the angels of Allah. And the last time we met, we were talking about what relationship do the angels have with man? And we've talked about how the angels play a very important role in our life from the time we are in the womb until our death. You know, when we are in our mother's womb, it, the angels are assigned to protect the womb. So unless Allah has decreed for a woman to have a, a miscarriage, you know, you will not miscarry. The woman will stay pregnant. But if Allah has decreed for the, uh, the woman to miscarry, then the angels will leave the womb and the child will abort itself out. Okay, and even at death, the angels play a role with us. They are the ones who remove our soul. And something I want to speak about today, and this is a question that I received uh, several emails from about. You know, uh, we all know that when it comes to the jinn, each and every one of us as human beings, we are all appointed a jinn who is a Kareem. What does the Arabic word Kareem mean? It means a constant companion. Allah has appointed for every human being a constant companion from amongst the jinn and another from amongst the angels. Now, this may be new to some of my students. You all knew about how each and every one of us, when we reach the age of puberty, Allah assigns a personal jinn to you, and it's that jinn's job to try to seduce you to disobey Allah. Well, not only does Allah assign a jinn to you, he also assigns an angel too, and they both live in your heart. The angel stays in your heart, and the jinn hoovers around into your heart until you go to sleep. When you go to sleep, the jinn will move to your nose and try to get you to uh, stay asleep and miss uh, Fajr and the other prayers. But that angel, he's assigned to your heart and he never leaves until you die. And what is the role of that angel? Well, let's first give the proof. Give the Dalil, as someone will ask. Give the Dalil, Sister Layla. Give the evidence that we all have a, a, an angel assigned to us at puberty too. Well, it's narrated in, in Sahih Muslim. Ibn Masood said that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, there is no one amongst you who has not been appointed a constant companion from amongst the jinn 
and another from amongst the angels. Even he, the prophet Muhammad, is appointed one. But the difference between he and us is that Allah has made his jinn Muslim. So his jinn cannot uh, encourage him or seduce him to disobey Allah. Okay, so there's the dalil. There is the clear evidence. Yes, I got the message on Facebook. Give me a second. They messaged me on Facebook saying that I need to post it into the other groups. I'm sorry. You remember, guys, I'm on medicine. <laughs> so let me post it. Uh, but yes, um, uh, so there's the clear evidence. There is the clear evidence that, yes, uh, we are assigned not only a gen uh, when we uh, reach the age of puberty, but we are also assigned an angel. And again, that angel, he lives in your heart. He stays in your heart, never leaves it until you die. And again, it happens at whatever time puberty occurs amongst the human being. Okay, everybody on Facebook, I did just add it to all the groups. So you guys should see it there now, inshallah. Thank you for reminding me. Okay, so uh, there was the evidence for that. So that brings us to the next question. What is the role of that angel? The angel that is assigned to every human being from the time that human being reaches the age of puberty till his death. What is his role? Well, first of all, he's different from the other angels. Remember, we talked about how we also have angels assigned to write down the things we say and do. Okay. Well, this angel is different. This angel is not writing down what we say or do. Instead, his job is to guide us, to give you good suggestions. For example, when you get the thought to commit a sin and something tells you, oh, don't do it, man, don't do it, you know this is wrong, that's the angel. That is the angel assigned to your heart. He's the one telling you to not do it. Anytime you get a good idea, a good idea to do something, you know, where did that idea come from? It came from that angel. So the person's uh, constant companion from amongst the angels, they influence you just like the companion amongst the jinn do, but it's the opposite way from the jinn. The jinn will encourage you to disobey a law, whereas the angel will encourage you to do good. Where's my evidence? Well, the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, the devil has a hold over the son of Adam, but the angel too has a hold over him. The hold of the devil tempts man to do evil and to deny the truth, whereas the hold of the angel encourages man to do good and to believe in the truth. Whoever experiences anything like this, let him know that what is encouraged of the good is from Allah and thank Allah for that. But if you experience suggestions to do evil, he said, then seek refuge with the law and say, Shaitan threatens you with poverty and orders you to commit evil. Hold on for one second, guys. Hello? Walaikum. Walaikum Salam. Would you like a corned beef sandwich? Oh, God. I'm doing a class. Yes, go ahead and put the stuff you know I like on it the mustard and cheese. Okay, Walaikum Salam. <laughs> Okay, hold on for a second, guys. All right, so uh, the prophet says, but if you get a suggestion to do something evil, then know that that suggestion came from Allah. I mean, from uh, the do something evil came from shaitan. And then uh, recite how Allah says, or remember how Allah tells us that shaitan will threaten us with poverty and he will command us to do bad things. You know, so that's the dalil. That is the dalil that what is the purpose of the angel that is assigned to our heart when we reach puberty? His purpose is to guide us, to guide us, to guide us to do good deeds. 
His purpose is to encourage us to do what's pleasing to Allah. So I want you guys to remember that. Not only do we have a gen assigned to our heart at puberty, but we also have an angel. Which one do we listen to? That's the question. Which one do we listen to? Well, to answer that question, the reality is that as Muslims, we are constantly fighting between these two entities. Sometimes we listen to the suggestions of the jinn that is assigned to us. And other times we will listen to the angels. Listen to what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. He said, whenever a person goes to bed at night, an angel and a devil will come towards him. And the angel will say, end your day by doing good deeds. This is the angel assigned to your heart. When you know it's time to go to bed, that angel is the one that puts that thought in your mind to why don't you pray the widow prayer first? Or why don't you uh, call your grandmother and give her salams? Or why don't you give in charity? And then that jinn assigned to you will say, end your day by doing something bad. It's nighttime. Ain't nobody going to see. Why don't you go sit outside on your patio without a hijab on? How many of you women get those suggestions? That's one of the suggestions I had to deal with just recently after I had my surgery. One of the things I had to face with, the pain was so unbearable. The pain was so unbearable. The pain was so unbearable. I was walking around here like a zombie, you know, crying in pain. And then I was moving from room to room to room because when I stand up, it makes the knee better. And then something said, go sit on the patio. I said, wait a minute, I don't have a hijab on. And then something said, it's nighttime. You ain't got to worry about a hijab. That was that gin. Why would I end my day by doing something haram? Whether it's nighttime or not, anyone can see me. If somebody happened to walk past, you know, we don't sit outside without a hijab on, even if it's your, your patio, your balcony. Okay, so that's an example as to how, you know, we're caught up between the two. We're caught between the angel trying to command us to do what's good and then the jinn. And then I'm gonna tell you guys how a law works. I'm gonna use myself as an example. This night, this is right after the surgery and I was going through the pain so bad and I wanted to go out on that patio, but I couldn't go get a hijab, couldn't sit, I, mean, I couldn't go walk and find a hijab. You know, Allah will send other help too. There's allies. Allah has his allies and Shaitan has his allies. We have allies amongst the angels and there's allies amongst the, hu the humans. Right when I was sitting there at my weakest point thinking, well, just go sit on the balcony, get some air. Ain't nobody going to see you. And I said, no, I'm not going to do that. But then I turned the walker and was walking to it. My phone beat, beat, beat. And Allah sent a sheikh. I got a text from one of the sheikhs. He said, assalamu alaikum, how is your pain? And I said, it's, um, I'm doing good. And he texted me back and said, be a good girl. Handle the pain. Be a big girl and be a good girl. And when he said that, that was like, ah, I said, I ain't sitting out there on that patio. So Allah will send his, his armies to help you when you're at your weakest point. You know, and then after that, that, that one text message telling me to be a good girl, be a smart girl, deal with the pain. You know, I'm like, Allah had him uh, message me just at on time so I don't get out on that patio without a hijab on. See how Allah works. See how Allah works. So, you know, we're constantly fighting between Shaitan and his allies. You know, and Allah and his, Allah and his allies. Sometimes we listen to the allies of Allah. Other times we listen to the allies of Shaitan. Okay, but here in this hadith, you know, the prophet is telling us even when we go to bed at night, the angel assigned to our heart will say, "In your day with good," whereas that jinn will tell you to end it with some bad. The prophet said, "If you remember Allah until sleep overtakes you." The angel will kick that devil away and that angel will spend the night watching over you. So in other words, if you do, the, you don't listen to the jinn, you do the good, 
then that angel will kick that shaitan away from you that's assigned to your heart and he will stand guard over you during the night. And when you wake up, another angel, again, the same angel and the same devil, they come and tell you to start your day with evil. If you are, the jinn does. An angel says, start your day with good. If you wake up and praise Allah for putting your soul back in your body, and you glorify Allah, then that, again, that angel will help you through the day. That angel will guide you through the day. But if you don't wake up praising Allah, thanking Allah, you wake up, you know, missing your prayers and all that, then you have started your day off in a bad way and that jinn has control. So as Muslims, we are constantly fighting against the suggestions of our personal jinn that's assigned to us at puberty and our personal angel. This is called jihad and nafs. You guys hear about that all the time. The struggle of the soul. So we're struggling, struggling, struggling against ourselves. That's that jihad and nafs, okay? So that's one of the angels that's assigned to us and that's at the age of puberty. The angel of guidance. I call him the angel of guidance. He will guide you to do good deeds during your life. And then we have other angels when we reach puberty that are assigned to us. And these are the angels that are the recording angels. They're the ones that write down our good and bad deeds. For every human being, Allah has appointed two angels who are always with that person and will never leave him until death. And they write down everything that you say and everything that you do. And we talked about these two angels before, Rakib and Atib. You know, as Allah says in the Quran, not a word does a person speak without that angel writing it down. And so that's why uh, each human being, every one of us, on a day of judgment, we will find when we have to stand before Allah and read from our book of deeds, we will find that our book of deeds contains everything that we said or did from the moment we reach the age of puberty until death. And again, I want you to remember, you will be reading everything you did from the time of puberty till death. Whatever you did before the age of puberty doesn't count. It's held against your parents, not you. Whatever good deeds you did go in their favor. Whatever bad deeds you did go in there against their favor. So from puberty till death, you will be told to read everything that you said and done from those moments on. And it's all written down because those angels recorded it. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us in an authentic hadith, a person may say something that is pleasing to Allah and don't even realize it. But because of that one word, Allah will raise him up. And then a person can say another thing that may be so displeasing to Allah that Allah will take him down levels. So that's why we have to be careful what comes out of our mouths because it's written down. Now, Allah doesn't hold us accountable for our thoughts. Whatever thoughts we have as human beings, the evil thoughts we have, as long as we do not speak them, as long as we do not act on them, Allah does not hold us accountable for them. But if you uh, uh, speak out, if you speak out against them, you know, against uh, in favor of your thoughts or do them, then you will be held accountable, okay? So those are the two recording angels. Also, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us that even though these angels are assigned to write down everything we say or do, Allah shows mercy to, to us. For example, the prophet said, if a, Allah says, if a person intends to do a bad deed, he said, do not write it down unless he does it. And if he does do it, then write it down as one as one uh, charge against him. 
On the other hand, if he intends to do a good deed and does not do it, still write it down as, as one blessing. And if he does do it, then write it down as 10. So this shows the mercy of Allah. You know, the mercy of Allah. Even if a person intends, and this is powerful, if a person intends to disobey Allah, unless you do it, it's not written down against you. Say, for example, my intentions are to go rob a bank tomorrow. But then I wake up in the morning, I decide I don't want to do this. I ain't doing it. So it's not written down. But on the other hand, if I had intentions to give in charity to the mosque tomorrow, but something happened and prevented me from going to the mosque to give the charity, that's still written down as a good deed for me because of my intentions. So you would think that as Muslims, check it out. You would think that as a Muslims, when it was time to stand before a law on a day of judgment, you would think that we'd have more good deeds in our favor than bad. But the sad reality is, guys, we still will have more bad deeds than good. Also, the Prophet wasalam, said, the angels say, oh, Allah, your slave wants to do something bad, although he knows best about him. So Allah will say, watch him. If he does it, then write it down as it is. But if he doesn't do it, then write it down as a good deed because he stayed away from it. So even if you got the intentions to do something bad, but you don't do it, okay, it's still written down as a good deed because you chose to abstain from what Allah said is uh, bad and evil for you. These are some wonderful, 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 powerful hadiths. Also, again, a lot of people will ask us, you know, Sister Layla, you know, uh, 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 these good ideas we get or these spiritual suggestions we get, where do they come from? They come from the angels. The prophet said, no day comes without two angels coming down to the earth in the morning. One of them will call you to do good. He will say, oh Allah, pay this person if he spends for your sake today. And the other angel will say, oh Allah, destroy this person if he doesn't spend for your sake today. So here you can see every morning when you wake up, there is another angel, not just the angel assigned to you, but Allah will send another angel down. One of the angels of mercy will come down to earth every morning, encouraging you to do for the sake of Allah, to do a good deed. And there's also an angel of punishment that will come down and say, oh, Allah, if he doesn't do anything good, then destroy him. So as you can see, the angels are all around us. They play a great role in our lives. They're, they interact with us on levels that we are not even aware of. We're not even conscious of these things happening. And also, guys, Allah will even send the angels to try and test us in our faith. We all know the story of the angel who was sent to ask the man why he was traveling to visit another man. And also, I'm going to tell you guys tonight for the Hadith class, we're going to go over the story of the leper, the blind man, and the bald man. Allah will send angels in the form of human beings to test us, to test the believers to see how strong we are in our Iman. And that happens every day. You may not even be aware of it. It could be someone coming in this website. It could be a person coming in this Zoom room who we've never had in here before, you know, asking a question just to test us, to see where we are in our practice. It could be a person that walks up to you in the street you know, and ask you a question about something pertaining to this religion that you should be doing as a test. So the angels, they are the soldiers of Allah and they play a very, very active role in the human being's personal life. 
even though we can't see them, even though we can't feel them, even though we can't touch them, they are constant. They are here and they are constant. The one assigned to our heart, he's there from the age of puberty until death. And he makes dual for you. He wants the best for you. He's encouraging us each and every day. Do this, do the right thing, do the right thing, do the right thing. Then Allah may send other angels to test you in your iman, test you in your faith, test you in your practice to see just how strong you are. You know, just like that person that texts me the other day. You know, he wasn't an angel. He's a sheikh, a real known scholar. But mashallah, I'm so glad he did text me and he texts me at the right time. Because I said, I'm not sitting on that patio. I'm going to be a good girl and I'm going to do the right thing. I'm not going to go out there and disobey Allah. It was just like he knew what was happening when there's no way he could know because he doesn't live even nowhere near me. SubhanAllah. You know, so I'm going to stop right here for today. Uh, if you guys have any questions or comments, inshallah, you can go ahead and type them on the screen. SubhanAllah.